Welcome back to Thriving Thoughts. I'm your host, Dr. Sherry. Friends, today's episode is dedicated to my grandmother, Elva Yoder, born September 5th of 1924. Elva, my grandma, left the world this morning, left her earthly body at 4.19 a.m. today, Friday, February 26th of 2021. I'm sure my grandma saw a lot of stuff in her life. You can only imagine, right, from 1924 to 2021. My grandma was critical to developing who I am today. I spent a lot of time with her growing up because, as it turns out, I'm allergic to gluten. But, you know, they didn't really know that when I was growing up. They didn't know that was a thing. And so I was sick home from school very often. And when my mom was working, I would go to my grandma's house and we would play games and eat lettuce leaves with a little bit of Miracle Whip spread on them. I don't even think it was Miracle Whip. It was just like generic salad dressing. I would play secretary at my grandpa's desk and we would just play games together and laugh. And she never seemed to tire of having me around. She always gave of herself. She was definitely an example of a life that loved. She lived a life that loved and a life that served. And I'm evidence of her life that loved. I'm part of my grandma's legacy. Because my grandma lived a life that loved, she raised a family, including my dad, who lives a life that loves And I, in turn, have been blessed with that torch passed down from generation to generation to live a life that loves. And so, my friends, I hope in this podcast, when you hear the truth that I speak, that you hear that truth spoken in love, that you hear the hard truths that I share, not as confrontation or purposeful agitation, but as an opportunity for you to be honest with yourselves. I'm very blessed to say it mildly, to be the progeny of my grandmother, to be a part of her legacy, and to continue to live a life that loves. Be sure to stay tuned to the very end of this episode because there's a special treat for you. My grandmother wrote a song back in the 90s She wrote a hymn called Love is the Answer. My father used to be in a singing group, a gospel, Southern gospel singing group with one of his brothers and some cousins, and they recorded this song in a recording studio. They actually recorded like six albums, I think. And the group was called the Laurel Highland Quartet at first, and then they changed their name to First Love. Anyway, my grandmother wrote the song, and my dad and his group recorded that song. So on the tail end of this episode that I'm dedicating to my grandma, you'll be able to hear her son, my dad, and her other son, my uncle Stan, and some other family members sing a song that my grandmother wrote, Love is the Answer. Stick around for that. Today, friends, I want to talk to you about something that seems fairly obvious, but we get it wrong all the time. And that's this. Look, each of us as human people, we have a desire, if we're living, breathing people, that is, we have a desire to be valuable, to be valued, right? To be needed, to be necessary. We have a value. We have a need for that. But unfortunately, we twist that up somehow. We make life harder than it has to be. Because instead of focusing on ourselves and studying what makes us valuable and using that, I'm going to get to that in a minute. Instead, we allow that need to push us into the striving path of needing to be better than, needing to be better than our neighbors, better than our coworkers, better than our friends, better than our followers on Instagram, better than you name it. 
We have this sick, twisted desire, not a need, a desire to be better than because of the need to feel valued and appreciated and needed and wanted. Have you twisted that need into this desire to be better than? I ask you to be honest and consider that for your own life. Here's how you know that's where your mind has gone. Well, because then if we've taken this need of our own, of needing to be valued and wanted and necessary, and we've then twisted it into this striving impossibility of being better than, well, in order to be better than, we have to pay attention to what everybody else is doing, right? We have to focus on what they are doing. More accurately, we focus on what they're not doing or what we think they're doing wrong, what we think they're doing wrong. So there's lots of arguments in all of this, you know, you're the problem. If there weren't people like you in the world, the world would be a better place. If there weren't people like you, my life would be better. So our misguided focus on being better than makes us focus on who we think others are and who we think they're not. When in fact, we just don't even know. We're just making stuff up in our heads, but we lie to ourselves and we tell ourselves that's the truth that we're believing about them. We know them better than they know themselves. We know all about those types of people. And these are some of the things you might say to yourself if you've gone down that striving path. I would never act like that. I would never do that. I would never say that. That's horrible. That's wrong. That makes me sick to my stomach. I'm not talking about obvious moral codes, right, of human civilization, you know, not murdering. But I am talking about stealing because, you know, we steal our own joy. <laughs> Believe it or not, we steal our own joy when we shift our focus from us to others. And so then we blame other people and they become the reason for all of our problems. And you might say, well, I don't blame other people for my problems. Maybe not consciously, but here's why I'm bringing this question to you, because I know that if I've been there, you've been there and you might be there. And guess what? We all tend to go back there from time to time. It's that judgy feeling of that looking down on. It's this selfish need. It's not even a need, you guys. It's this selfish ego boost to make ourselves feel better. It goes back to like what we did in, in elementary school. And people would say, well, they're just picking on you because they don't want you to look at them. They don't want you to focus on them. Well, that's truer yet as reasoning, thinking adults, right? Listen, it's tough work to focus on ourselves. It's easy to focus on other people. That's what we say to ourselves anyway. That's the lie. Both take equal energy. In fact, focusing on other people and trying to imagine or conjure up who we think they are or who we think they're not, it takes a lot more because we just don't know and we're trying to be a crystal ball mind reader. It's just an impossibility. So we're expending all of this energy. And then on top of that, there's no outcome because guess what, friends? The outcome is that we continue to blame and persecute, yes, persecute other people, and there we are. We're stuck. We attempt to put other people in their place, and then we get stuck in our own, stuck in that same space of striving, striving to be better than. There is a truth, an alternative for you, my friends, and yep, it's work. I know. I saw work and pain and dark spaces and thought work. Yeah, I do. I know. But that's because I care because I'm living a life that loves. So let's go back to the beginning, that very basic need to be valued, needed, to matter, right? Why would we look to other people or think that focusing on other people would make that happen? The truth is you're already valuable and needed and wanted and necessary, you just are. That's an absolute truth because God created you for a purpose, right? On purpose. You were not an accident. So if instead we just say, I believe that truth and then focus on what makes me valuable, focus on who am I? Who am I not? 
Who is the person I want to be? Not who is the person I don't want that person to be? Who do I want to be? How do I want to show up in the world? What are my gifts? Then I start to focus on that, right? I start to focus on, I have a purpose. I was created for a purpose. Oh, wow. Let me go dig deeper into that. Let me walk in that. Let me discover that. Look, a lot of us haven't even discovered that purpose. And I think that's because we're too busy focusing on other people. So I'm going to invite you to write the ship. It's not too late, friends. This could be a day by day effort for many of us. Write the ship, bring it back to you, focus on you, why you matter, why you're needed, why you are here. What life are you called to live? Focus on that because here's what happens when you focus on the life that you're called to live. You develop that, you refine it, you sharpen it. And then guess what? Suddenly you're serving people. You're needed by people. People need what you have. They need who you are. They need what you've been created to do. Not everybody, but your people and the right people. When you develop that and you focus on you, the right people will come. And then you will have that instantaneous feeling of fulfillment. That fulfillment that can never be found by considering yourself or wishing yourself to be better than and that's just one more example of what it looks like to practice and live in a thriving thought world. Go ahead and get your three times a week encouragement from me straight to your text messaging inbox. Just text THRIVE to 540-369-2139. I'll close out this episode today to honor the life of my grandmother who really did live a life that loved she was on this earth for 96 years, and I'm grateful and honored to be an extension of her, an extension of her legacy, and to continue to live a life that loves. Please enjoy this song that she wrote, Love is the Answer, as performed by my dad's Southern Gospel singing group, the Laurel Highland Quartet. Sun from above, so pure and holy and righteous was he. Why should he suffer for someone like me? Love is the answer, yes, love divine to save and rescue this soul. Entirely 